Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's uh, session. I uh, appreciate your guys coming in. If you can hear me, um, will you please go ahead and just type in like a yes or something into the question window? Uh, that way we can know we can <laughs> that everything's working properly. All right, great. Thanks, Richard, Avery, um, Robert. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to your favorite part, the legal disclaimer. <laughs> Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company's software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock should have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I know you guys love that part. Anyway, thanks for coming. Today, we're, we have uh, back in our room Ray Swanson. Uh, I'm sorry, Roy Swanson. <laughs> Apparently, I need to finish up some coffee. Roy's uh, done quite a few classes with us, uh, really has an interesting take on the RMO that he's going to share with us, and um, um, I'm going to basically kind of get him ready to go and kind of kick him off. So let's get going. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, again, um, my name is Roy Swanson, and I'm the founder of a site called SteadyTrader.com. Um, I have to run the disclaimer, too, because I'm the one doing the talking, but it basically says that we're not brokers or certified financial planners and all the results that we use here are illustrations based on simulated trade results and of course past performance on this or any system is not indicative of future performance. The information presented here is solely our opinion and not in, and intended to stimulate your own explorations in trading. Uh, on the agenda today we're going to talk about some new stock market patterns um, that we discovered when I wrote a book about a year ago called Read This First Before You Buy Stocks and um, at the end of the presentation, I'll give you instructions on how you can get a free copy of that. But basically, the research in the book, uh, we uncovered some major changes to the fundamental dynamics of the stock market, and we then went about to create a new trading system to match it. We'll also talk about midway through the presentation about what I see as the number one trading trap. So um, we are going to give you a few things that uh, you, know, you can learn and apply in your own trading, I, I believe. Um, the trading system that we developed is called Greenlight. It's powered by Metastock. It's a very accurate system. It has 88% winning trades. It has solid gains of about 4% per winning trade, double-digit monthly gains, and the returns are quick because the average hold is, is really short. It's two and a half days, and this is what we've been getting in Q1 of this year, which, as we all know, has been a tough, tough month, tough year for trading so far, five months of a sideways market. Um, a little bit about me, um, I've been trading for 20 years. I got started in the mid-90s when online trading started, and uh, I will never forget because I walked in on the office of the CFO of the company where I was working, and I caught him at his desk on his PC. He was day trading, and he told me he was basically day trading and making enough money to pay for his kid's college tuition. So that sounded good to me, and I got an online account and started trading then and never stopped. Um, in fact, a couple of years after that, I uh, was in conversations with DLJ to work on the first derivatives. They heard I was a math geek. Um, I actually t turned that down because derivatives were so new, I wasn't sure they were going to go anywhere. But I did end up being a consultant to several of the trading system and educate trading system providers, strategy creators, and providers. Um, about 25 years experience, I would say, between myself and my partner. We've worked for over two dozen of them, and we know the strengths and weaknesses of a lot of these systems. We've seen so many. Um, and even more important, we know why traders have trouble even with, with good systems, and, and we'll get to that in a minute. So my first question to the group is, um, are you a leprechaun trader? And I would assume that since this is a metastatic audience, we don't have any leprechaun traders here. But just checking. Um, and by a leprechaun trader, I mean people who are just falling for the hype that's everywhere. You know, that simple rules, simple arithmetic, free tools, huge trades, five minutes a day, you know, set it and forget it, no effort to learn. I mean, you may as well hire a leprechaun to do your trading. Um, I've never seen that work, and uh, even though I do, I'd like to believe in leprechauns. Um, we're going to talk about a professional approach to trading, 
And uh, by that, I mean that we were talking about guidelines and using good judgment on top of the data. We're going to talk about higher math. We're talking about professional tools, which I count Metastock as one of those. Um, we're talking about realistic gains per trade. We're not talking about triple dig digit gains on a regular basis, just regular realistic gains per trade. We're talking about spending an hour a day, maybe a half hour after the close and an hour, a half hour during the day to monitor your money because I do believe any serious trader who's, who's active wants to monitor their positions. And uh, we're talking about learning to master a strategy. I mean, trading is like anything else. There's no free lunch. There are no leprechauns. Um, but I believe that anyone with dedication and, and, and good disciplines can succeed. So why are we here? Well, the market has changed, and I want to talk a little bit about that change. You know, again, we've all been here. We're all in the same boat. This is what I call the new normal. I'll put the green line in just to show how flat it is. Um, from December through May, um, the market isn't going anywhere. What I really would like you to take note of is that the overall bias of the market is changing every few days. The longest stretch seems to be about four days before the market switches and just it's going up and down and up and down. Um, this does, though, seem to be some type of a new normal. And at the end of the day, the market eat down, I think, 0.9% gain on the S&P for the first five months. So we want to talk about the real change. And the real change happened actually a while back. Of course, we all know about the old market. That was the buy and hold market from the Great Depression all the way to about the 90s. Buy good stocks. They'll take care of you. The market will always take care of you. Stay invested. And it was largely true. But then something happened in the 90s. And I call that the market of dreams. And that was when I walked in the door of my CFO's office and caught him day trading. Um, it was almost impossible not to make money. It made people think that, hey, this is easy. This trading stuff is just, you know, buy stocks and they go up. And it was like that, especially for a few years in there uh, towards the, the late 90s. But after that, we have what I call the new market. The new market materialized, and the new market is not like the old market. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that the new market has wild swings of boom and bust unprecedented compared to the previous 70 or 80 years. And this is the change. It's been with us now for 15 years, but hardly anyone talks about it, and yet it's real. This is a straight line graph. There's no tricks with log scales or any, anything like that. The new market just is not like the old market. The new market is short, strong cycles, and it's caused by short-term profit-taking. The institutional and large volume players they're taking their profits as soon as they see them. And it's not going away because the institutional players, they're all on the same page now. They've all got basically the same computers, pretty much the same playbook. So the cycles are not only strong, short, they're not only short, they're strong. So again, they're not this short, strong cycle of the new market is not going away. Our first rule that we came up to trade in this environment is to set your shutter speed. The analogy is like having a camera. You know, if you have a camera, and you have a long shutter speed, the picture's blurry. Well, that's what we call long-term trading. It's a long shutter speed, it's blurry trading, and it's basically dead. We all know that. That was the old market. BlackRock did a study a couple of years ago that showed some basically 2000, 2000, I think 13, 2% a year on average. It's just no way to make money. Now, short-term and swing trading, day or intraday, these are okay. All kinds of talk and buzz about high frequency trading, but we don't have, you know, at home, individual traders, we don't have the technology. We don't have trunk lines to the internet. We don't have, you know, a stack of supercomputers in the spare bedroom. So we do have the middle ground here of short term day or interday trading. And we want to now look at what shutter speed means in the worst possible market that any of us have seen, which is the crash from October 2008 to March 2009. Now, this was five months that wiped out a lot of portfolios, especially for long-term traders. On a weekly basis, though, there were weeks that were really quite good, where there were significant gains to be made. So on a weekly basis, or a mid, sort of a middling shutter speed, the crash was tough, but not, not really terrible. Now, here's where it's really interesting. On a daily basis, we say, what crash? Because 41 days out of 105, 
of the worst period, the worst drop in our lifetimes, it was 40% in up market. I'm talking about simple, you know, just look at the, the S&P or the Dow. A lot of green bars in there, plenty of chances to make money even with the simplest of trading, uh, going with, with, the, with the strength of the market. So the point being is that daily engagement in the new normal, setting your shutter speed to daily and being in there steadily, trading steadily with a daily perspective is really, really the way to trade in the new, what we call the new market or the new normal. Now what about technicals? A lot of people think technicals can save them and we like technicals because we're data, we're data traders. We love using data. But there's a problem with most technicals, and that is that technicals trade the old market. Candlesticks are popular, but let's face it, they come from the 18th century. We all know the story, the Japanese rice traders. This is very old, old point of view of trading. The Elliott Wave, it sounds nice and modern, but Elliott wrote that stuff up in the 30s. He used data from the Civil War to the 1930s to do his research. RSI was published in 78. Again, a couple decades of research before that. Bond bands just a couple years later. The point is, is that all the research that went into these technicals that, that validated them came from the old market, from the old market that was not exhibiting these wild swings that we see today. So our point of view is that using technicals is fine, but you've got to make adjustments to the technicals to get them in sync with the basically the pace of the new market. And you need new rules. We have four new rules that we apply to any any strategy we're considering. The first, of course, is the daily time horizon. We've covered that. The next is that when you're in there every day looking for trades, it's really important to only have a few good signals because otherwise you just get overloaded with the possibilities. Brain fog sets in. Um, there's just too much input, too many traders chasing too many uh, too many leads, as it were. Um, our third rule is that the rules of the strategy itself should be adjusted on a daily basis. We've just seen that the overall bias of the market is changing every couple of days. So why would you use a strategy with the same rules day after day, even though one day the market's up, two days later the market is really hitting down, and you're using the same rules on your strategy? We don't think that's wise. We believe that the rules of any strategy should be adjusted on an almost daily basis. Finally, our last rule is that current performance is the validation. Because the new market is changing and has changed so much, we don't believe in looking at years and years past of data to validate signals and strategies. We believe in looking at current performance. Basically, you're only as good as your last trade. If it's working now, that's great. If it worked nine months ago, well, do we really care? That was a different market. So the overall rule, the golden rule for our four rules is to adapt daily because the market is changing almost daily. Now to talk a little bit about the green light strategy. Um, we realized we wanted to develop a strategy that would trade through the never ending cycle of profit taking pullbacks as we call them. Some people call them corrections, but on, a, on an almost daily basis or every two, three, four days, the market's changing direction. So we realized that short, quick price moves are the way to cut through this kind of chop. And we looked for a strategy that could give us a very short average hold that could fit into those swings with, with a realistic gain, considering that we're looking for very short holds. So these are the two main parameters of the green light system. Short hold of a couple days, one to five days. Five days is the maximum. It's five and out, but the average turns out to be two and a half, and then a realistic gain per trade, but nothing excessive, not looking for the 10, 12, 20% trades or any of that stuff. This is what the track record looks like, and I show it to illustrate one point, uh, a couple points. One is the accuracy. We've hit the accuracy very well, 89%. This is the first quarter. You'll see the accuracy actually went up into the low 90s, and the way that was achieved was from the daily adjustments I keep talking about. The percent exposure are the percent of signals that actually trigger as trades, that execute as trades. You can see that as the market became more and more unpredictable, more and more choppy, the percent exposure cut way back. Went from 72 to 45%, the average is 61, but there was really a trend here. 
This was the strategy's rules adapting, and it just happens automatically by following the rules, but adapting to the changing market. We still had a nice number of trades in March, 32 trades as opposed to 42, it's still very actively trading, but the exposure rate went way down and the accuracy went up. That's what we call a strategy that self-corrects and adjusts to the market on a daily basis. Now we start with RMO, and I have to thank Jeff for that because after we wrote the book and realized what kind of strategy we wanted to develop, we, we had heard from a friend of a friend that uh, Jeff Gibby really likes RMO and the Metastock really likes RMO. So we started with RMO. And basic RMO is a good indicator. Uh, one of the good things about RMO is that it was written in the mid-2000s. So this is one of the few technicals that is, it's, was written and written up in the new market. It's after, way after the, the change in the 90s. It came, was first published, I believe, in around 2005, somewhere in there. Now, basic RMO is a good indicator, but like a lot of indicators, it takes a while for the trade to rise, and we were looking for something shorter. You know, these blue buy signals, you've seen them in Metastock probably, and then the stock, it does tend to go up quite a bit. But we wanted something that could, we could really count on. We wanted to tighten up RNO, RMO, and that's what we did by using it in a new way. That's the hack. It's tightening up RMO to trade in the cracks of the new market. And this is what the green light trades look like. Basically, they look like five-day trends. Uh, this is AFAM from 12.27. It's an end-of-day signal. Target entry the next day. You can see this one. First day, we had a 7% gain. By the fourth day, it was up 14%, and then the trend is over. You can see the trend is flat going in. Flat going out, bing, it's just a short, hard trend. This is exactly what we were looking for, and this is what the strategy delivers. Here again, buy signal, and that, that is an RMO buy signal, but we use different methodologies to make sure we only get the signals that execute on trades like this. Next day, target entry, 7% that's set by day 2, 9% by day 5. You can see day 6, it's, the trend is already tapering off. These trends don't last. Here's GE, my, one of my favorite examples, because no one thinks of GE as a short-term play, but we caught this RMO signal on GE on April 10th, the next day, for 10% gain, a very nice move, almost unheard of for a stock like GE. You can see it was flat going in, and then the trend was over right away. These trends do not last. This is, here's one from the 21st. Again, it's always the same story. Some of these are shorter. The last two have been shorter. This is just really a two-day pop, and the trade ends up just being one day here. Here's the signal on this day, and on day two, it was up 5.9%. Again, flat going in, the trend ends quickly. When the market is bearish, we keep it simple. We scan heavily with the inverse ETFs, because a lot of traders don't want to get into shorts. We don't blame them. So we look at the inverse funds. We call them the bear ETFs. They've been some of our best trades this year. Here's DRV from April 30th. Again, we had the buy signal and a nice one-day trend, 5.6% move. Definitely worth trading. So again, these trades are very tight. The move happens generally between one to two, three, four, five days max, and that's it. It's a very contained strategy because we basically contain the signals to be very tight. How we do it? Well, no surprises here. We follow our own rules that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. We make a daily adjustment. That daily adjustment is based on our first scan where we measure and rate the daily market conditions. Based on that exploration in Metastock, we select lists based on step one. So we use the list manager and we select certain lists. So if the market looks bullish, we scan some lists. If the market looks middling, we scan others. If it looks bearish, we scan others. This keeps our scan times really short. Our scans are basically 30 seconds or less. They don't take a couple minutes. They just bing, bing, scan because we, we've pre-selected dedicated lists for each type of market conditions, and you learn that in the strategy. We also do a second adjustment, and we adjust the entries for the daily market condition. So basically, we measure and rate that daily market, and then we make two adjustments based on the daily market condition. 
and the second one is we change our entry rules. So remember I talked about why would you use the same rules every day? Well, at green light, we don't. We use different rules every day based on the overall market conditions. And of course, these overall conditions have been changing every couple of days because that's what the market's doing now. The next thing we do is we check the performance. We do what I call a current performance reality check. So after we scan for the signals, we measure and rate each signal based on recent trend strength and three-month accuracy of the signal. So again, just to tighten up, when we only take the best signals based on recent trend strength and three-month accuracy. We also double-check at the end for false signals, and that's a quick look at the news of the day because I don't care how good your data is, I don't care how good the algorithms are, the news of the day can affect stocks. We call it a false signal because the news kind of comes out there and blows the, blows the data one way or the other. So it's pretty easy to spot. We've, we've developed basically a four-question methodology to look for four different types of news, and, ha and if the answer is yes to any of those, we know that the data might be being pushed a little bit by the news. So we double check for what we call false media-driven signals and knock those out. Third thing we do, again, it's just a few good signals following our own advice. We start, we get about 10 to 12 from the basic RMO scan. Then we knock out six after validating each one of the signals. We cut that down to six, and then we knock the six down to three or four after the final false signal cut. So it's all about selectivity and getting down to three or four signals a day. Four is our absolute max. We never go out with more than four signals a day, and you'll see why in a minute, why that's very, very important. Um, and it really, part of this comes down to the money management. We follow a strict money management system. Money management is, uh, as many of you know, it's like your sales budget and your revenue model and your sales plan all in one. If you were running a division of a company, you'd have a sales budget and you'd have you know, something for January, a little more for February, a little more for March. It's, but it's not just your goals. Money management is how you achieve them. It's your plan. We teach with the strategy what we call the quick cycle portfolio or the quick cycle rotational portfolio. It's, the, the system is spec'd on a $12,500 account that just about any trader can afford to fund the entire strategy. And then we cycle part of the money in every day. So with an average hold of two and a half days, Basically, the way it works, again, on averages here, is 5,000 goes in Monday, comes out Wednesday with a roughly a 3% gain, figuring all winners and losers together. And we do that over and over again. 5,000 in Tuesday, comes out Thursday. Wednesday, Friday. So you're cycling through the capital that's funding the strategy basically twice in a week. That's five times five, 25,000. If you start out with a $12,500 portfolio, you're really cycling through twice a week on that money, and each each time it's three percent. So you know, theoretically or, or from the model, you know, you're looking at roughly a six percent, five, six, seven percent gain on that money. That's the benefit of the quick cycle approach. It allows modest gains, trades of three, four, five percent, to add up to significant returns. Here's an example again. We spec it out at 12.5, 12,500 for the trading account, and $2,000 buy orders. All very conservative, risk-averse trading. Four signals a day. Let's say, for the sake of example, three trades execute, 6,000 put in. It's usually a little bit less than three on average that actually execute. Two win, one loss. We know our accuracy is much higher than that, but for the sake of the example, let's keep it conservative. And that would be at a 3% gain, $100 net after commissions, knocking out $10 for your broker fees, and considering using the use of stop loss, $30 off the one losing trade. This is how it shakes out. The net profit is only $70 a day. That's right. But if you do that every day, it adds up. Three fifty dollars a week, $17,500 a year. That's 140% annual return. And this is how trading from modest gains on a daily basis really adds up. Um, what we like about it, again, we're not into leprechaun trading. We do nothing outrageous, nothing extraordinary. It's all about being absolutely hard-nosed realistic. Um, this is our sample portfolio based on that, that account for 
starting in January of this year, just to show you how it's performed compared to the S&P. You can see multiples against the S&P, 18% versus 3% in January, 24% for the strategy versus 5.8 in February. Even in April, where they were closer, it was six times what the, what the S&P 500 did. And how does that stack up again? Because we're rolling through the capital that funds the strategy t basically twice a week, it really adds up. So a $12,500 investment becomes 21.8 by the end of May. That's a, that's a ROI year to date of 74% on track, you know, for looking at 100 plus uh, for the year. We like to say this is why Derek Jeter was the captain of the Yankees because consistent base hits wins the ball game. And this is, without a doubt, a base hit strategy that anyone can succeed with. It's about going out, making some solid, modest trades, but doing it every day with discipline. Now we want to talk a little bit, as I promised, about the number one trading strategy trap. And it basically is the fact that all research-based and database trading strategies are based on sample trading data. We all know that. And people generally like to see a big sample size, whether it's, you know, they'd rather see 10 years in one year, they'd rather see 4,000 trades than 100 trades. Academic researchers typically use huge samples spanning decades. Um, people are attuned to the fact that they want to see a lot of data to back up any kind of strategy, any kind of theory. And that's good science up to a point, but then here's what happens when we're talking about being an individual trader with a strategy. Um, cherry picking is what kills most strategies. And here's the main reason. If you don't trade all the signals, you have no reason to expect to match the published results. So I'd like to say that again so it really sinks in. If you don't trade all the signals, there's no reason to expect to match anything close to the published results. Give you an example. Let's say you have a system that regularly produces 20 signals a day, or it's a hot list you like to read, 20 signals a day. Of course, some don't execute, but most do. So let's say six don't execute, 14 do execute. We have 11 of the 14 win, three lose. It's a great, that's a great strategy. I love it. I mean, it's highly accurate. It, 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 it's somewhat selective, but here's the problem. Who can afford to trade all 20 signals? Who can afford to make 14 trades? How much money are you going to risk on one strategy? So what happens is individuals cherry pick. Anybody would do it. I would do it. You just don't want to risk all that money or you don't have the money. Who has fifty or $100,000 to risk on one trading strategy? So you cherry pick. Now, when you cherry pick and let's say you're going to do, you say, well, I'm going to do three. I'll do three from this strategy or this list. Well, are your three going to be the six that don't execute? Are you going to be the 11 that win or the three that lose? When you cherry pick, you're just going in and you're, you're sort of surgically going into portions of the sample, but you may not hit what the aggregate published data is. So cherry picking basically says throw out the research, you're you're basically throwing darts. Most systems, and this is the trap of most systems, they produce far too many signals for the average individual trader to trade because they require a trading account of fifty to hundred thousand dollars or more. And technicals themselves are based on huge sample sets of data. Usually the researchers, again, they use decades of trading data. The results always cluster within these large samples. So I don't care what the system is, you know, our strategy included, there's going to be like a cluster of two days in a row where it doesn't work and then six days in a row where it does. So when you cherry pick, you always run the risk of going into one of those clusters. You could hit a boom cluster or a bust cluster. So unless you can trade all the signals, you have no reason to match the public published results. That's why we designed Greenlight with only four signals a day. That's it. Never more than four. It can be funded with $12,500 because of the quick cycle rotational method of trading. And because we cycle quickly, that there's only, only a part of the account invested in the market on any given day, 
that minimizes the effect of clustering. So there's a method to keeping the system so tight, and one of those is, is that it avoids cherry picking, which is really the downfall of, I'd say, 80% of the reason a lot of people have frustration and bad results with other systems. We won't let that happen. <laughs> we only give you four signals. Um, some frequently asked questions, the minimum account size, we covered that, it's 12,500, can you use options? I think possibly weekly options given the time frame of one of maximum five day holds, but we're not options traders, I'd leave that up to options guys to think about. Um, can you work a regular day job? Absolutely, it's an end of day system. Half hour at the end of the day, half hour during the day to monitor uh, your, your positions. How much subjectivity? This is where we get to the good judgment part. If you remember, we talked about reading the data, reading the scans, and then making judgment calls. This is what it's about. This is how real professionals on the street trade. You know, the geeks come in from the quant room and they show the money manager or the trader, here's a list of you know, what, what, what you think you should do. But the fact is that the trader makes the call. This is what we encourage people to do with Greenlight. You run the scans, you look at the data, and then we give you ways to evaluate the data. It's always yes or no questions. Rate the data, evaluate it, make the judgment call. That's another reason why we call this a professional system. Professionals know you can't trade by pressing a button. Professionals know you use the data as far as you can take it, and you can take it maybe 90%, but the last few inches has to be a judgment call. And that's what we do with Greenlight. We help people make those calls. What you get with the system is full instructions, how to run the scans, how to validate signals, place orders, and manage the portfolio. It's all included. Get an instruction manual, get an Excel spreadsheet on the quick cycle portfolio, which shows you exactly how it works and what the assumptions are. Metastock has graciously offered one free month for those of you who are not subscribers already. It's for new subscribers only, but um, you can actually get one free month if you are new to Metastock. And I know a lot of you here have Metastock, but some of you who don't, Jeff was nice enough to throw that in. Um, we have a trades worksheet that you get with the system that helps basically figures out your entry pads, your target entries, your shares, makes it really easy to come up with your trade list. It's an Excel sheet that comes with the system. We have a template for a, a tracking portfolio. We use Yahoo because Yahoo is free, it's easy, it's always there, and it works great. And it, it, we help you basically set up a template so you have all your daily portfolios just right there in Yahoo, you can keep track of them. Now, where we, really, where we really work hard is to help validate your understanding of the methodology. And the main thing we do for this is we videotape ourselves in the office, running our scans, creating the signals in real time. We videotape it and we narrate it so that you can run the scans, run the explorations, create your signal list and your trade list, and then you can go click and look at the video of us doing it. So you can see if you're doing it the way we're doing it. If you're actually doing it on your own the way we are intending it based on the teaching materials. We also give free access to the trades themselves, just the signals, daily signal service. So once you, you, know, you get pretty good at it, you don't have to really watch the movie every time. You could just go and check your signals against the daily signals that we publish. So we give two ways where you can do it yourself on a daily basis, run the scan, Get your, get your trade list and then validate that you're getting what we're getting. And again, after a few weeks of that, I would say two to three weeks of that, you'll basically have the methodology down pretty cold. Um, we really think that the, this, this, this is a helpful way and an easy way to let people learn um, because you can do it all on your own at your own time. Everything is set up on a home page, the materials in the middle, and then you can Basically, you follow the instructions, run your scans, and then you can always check the scan on videos or the daily signals. It's all set up on a home page, easy access, uh, nothing to wait in the mail for. You know, it's all online. Log in with your password. Um, the whole package costs $289. We're running a little special today uh, for those of you at the webinar. And again, you get the full instructions, unlimited scan room access. That's unlimited. One month of the daily signals for free. And uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed to Metastock, one month of Metastock EOD in a day is included with the price. 
So I want to thank everyone for coming. I'll look at questions now. Um, to find out more about the strategy or order it, please go to SteadyTrader.com. Um, you can also go to SteadyTrader.com to get your free copy of the book. I highly recommend grabbing the book. It's a free download. Um, when you read the book, it'll really drives home in a lot more detail than I could today the incredible change that happened in the 90s and how the new market is so different than the old market and how so many of the trading aids that were developed prior to the new market just don't work anymore. Um, the book was really the genesis of the green light trading strategy and it's a free download. Welcome to it. It's about 80 pages. Um, Questions, please send them to me at Steady Trader, info at Steady Trader. We answer all the email as quickly as we can. Um, and uh, that's about it. Um, let me open up the control panel here. I'll look at the questions. Jeff, do you see any questions? I haven't been able to see it based on the... Uh... Hey, Roy. I, I saw a couple that I answered. Scott asked, is it recorded? Yes, it's recorded. Um... Okay. Reed, uh, okay. Alberto, uh, asked you out to purchase the RMO package uh, from Metastock to use this. I said, no, it's in, uh, the version of RMO right. that you actually use is included with Metastock for free. It's not RMO ATM. That's right. It's the basic version. I think, uh, Jeff, you've said it's been in the last three versions of Metastock, I uh, believe. Uh, since 10, so the last four yeah. versions of Metastock, okay. I believe, is when we added it. So, And Reed says, where do we find the inputs necessary to keep Greenlight current? Well, that's what you pay for. <laughs> that's the strategy. <laughs> so, the, the rules of the strategy include, in the in the manual, all the, all the inputs. We make little tweaks to the RMO and the other exploration we use. Um, we have custom lists that we scan against, so um, that's really the guts of the strategy. Then that's all the questions. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I guess we'll wrap up there. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody, and uh, thanks for coming, Roy. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Okay. It's very exciting, and um, we'll see everybody see next time. Hope to see some of you attendees uh, in the scan room or uh, download the book and uh, send me your questions at Steady Trader. Uh, one more question came in. Yep. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Come Is back. this only used on ETF? It's stocks and ETFs. We, 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 we run a special scan against the bear ETFs when the market conditions are weak, when they're very weak. It just keeps things simple because, again, a lot of traders don't want to get involved with shorts. So the inverse funds, the bear funds, um, they, we've had some great trades on that. And uh, the way the market is, you need something on these really on these down cycles. Now here's a really good question, um, and this is going to come up a lot against our user base, just because we get a lot of people in different markets. But um, right. is it how applicable is it to other markets like the ASX or the UK markets? Well, that's a good question. See. I think it's applicable, but we haven't done it. We haven't. We have no track record. We haven't kept any any historical um, you know, data on that. The principles are all. It could be translated, but it would be up to the individual to take a look at um, you know applying it to their to their stock market, like like the Australian market. So again, I see no reason why it shouldn't work because the principles are all based on things like price, you know, basically price pressure. Um, but again, we don't we don't have any experience with it. Your results may vary. It's so interesting. I mean, yeah. initially the system that he's he's kind of built this whole trading strategy around was built for Indian stocks uh, mm -hmm. on the NSC, the National Stock Exchange of India. That's right, the RMO, exactly. Um, and it's amazing how well that actually works. I, I've shown it to traders in Australia and the UK. And it's amazing how portable these types of systems are. But I, I think what Roy is saying is, is we have a, he, we don't really have the research that we do in the U.S. So. Exactly. So, again, I think the principles are universal. There would be some extra work on the part of the individual in trading a different exchange. Um, you know, it would probably take a few weeks to maybe even a couple months to actually, you know, roll out your version for your local markets and then watch it for a little bit. We always believe that you should you know, watch before you invest real money. 
Um, so, but no reason why it couldn't work. Now, here's a question from Terry that I'm going to kind of answer uh, and just make sure that it's right. Uh, you're using primarily scans that are already built into Metastock. In other words, you don't have your own explorations. Right. We use yeah, we use out-of-the-box explorations, but we tweak them. As you know, you can go in and click that edit button, and we, we have a few little things we tweak. It's not a lot, but it's enough to do what we showed, just to tighten up and only get signals for those those basically one to five day moves. That's what it's all about. I call it tightening up RMO. <laughs> Here's another question. This is uh, kind of a fun one. Everybody woke up and they started answering, ask, asking questions. I don't know if woke up is the right word. <laughs> that implies, re, uh, Roy, that um, the uh, the presentation was boring, but I was awake the whole time, so i <laughs> for saying that. But uh, would it make sense to buy two or three time ETFs when you're using the system? Is there a question from Reed? Well, the fact is is that there, there are some 3x leveraged ETFs in, in, in the in the list. We give a custom list of ETFs that we scan against, make it easy for you, just plug it in. Um, but yeah, the <laughs> short answer is yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, another question from Philip McGregor is, do you use mainly large cap stocks in your stocks list? We use different lists on different days. That's part of the beauty of the system. So we have roughly about uh, half a dozen different lists which we spec out in the instructions. So we have dip, when the market is reading, you know, really bullish and great, there's one set of lists. When the market is weak, there's another set of lists. And in the middle, we have different. So we have a five-point scale that we use to rate the overall bias on any given day. And then we give instructions on which lists to scan. So it's very focused on, um, on not looking for trades you know, where we're, we're not going to find good ones. It's kind of like that old thing, why take out the boat to where the fish aren't biting, right? So it's, it's not as simple as, you know, do we do large cap or small cap? We, we adjust with the overall bias of the market. Ken uh, Rorden, Ken, good to see you. Uh, I know you're in a lot of the webinars that we do, and uh, we, I appreciate you coming in. Um, he wants to know if you can go back to the slide that shows what's contained in the offer. Sure. Um, I'll just go through all the materials again. You get full instructions, which includes how to run the scans. I call them scans. I know Jeff Metastock calls them explorations. Um, how to validate them. That's basically after the scans, you validate the signals. These are all the instructions, how to place the orders, and how to manage the port quick cycle portfolio. So there is a manual that's in there in a PDF format. There's a Excel spreadsheet that has all the assumptions and just really lays out, maps out how the quick cycle portfolio works. Um, there's another spreadsheet that we call the daily trades worksheet where you set your target entries. <coughs> Excuse me. Set your target entries. This is one of our daily uh, adjustments and then it sets the target entry and then you put your results in there. So it makes it easy to get your trade list. We have a template for Yahoo. It's no big deal, but you know, you want to have a tracking portfolio. And what happens is you do one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, so every day you just it takes about 30 seconds to pop in a new portfolio. But that's how we you know, keep track of everything. Um, free access to the scan room. That's unlimited free. We tape ourselves about three times a week. We don't do it every day, but we do it enough so that you can really go in there and validate that you're learning it correctly. Daily signal service free for one month. Um, and again, it's all wrapped up on a home page with all the materials, so you log in, username, password, and it's there for you. Anyway, that's that's uh, everything listed in bullet, bullet form. Uh, Philip wants to make sure that the instructions include um, instructions on how to make your list, which they do. Yes, yes, we give the list. Yep, yep, they're in the addendum. John, uh, I don't know if this is his real last name, but John Rideout asked, would these stocks be optionable? A man after my own heart. Yes, well, uh, some of them are, again, we, we think that the time frame would be okay for weekly options, but we're, we're just not options traders. So, um, but I can tell you that an awful lot of them are. Look at that. And uh, as time goes on, we may develop a, a special version of it just for options. But. Uh, Reed's asked, does your system work during earnings season? It's worked consistently during every season, um, again, because it adjusts. Um, and if you recall, I said the, that was that final step where we where we look for what I call the false signals. Well, 
we have four questions that we ask, and one of them is about was there an earnings call? Because we all we've all seen it, right? Earnings call looks good, and the stock Scott goes wild, and that you know a lot of data driven systems are going to get sort of uh, basically fooled by that. So we take that into account um, so that when you trade, you know you don't jump in on a trade that happens after the lift from the earnings call and then it dives the next day. <laughs> um, and that's why we put that at the last step because as I was saying, you can take data only so far. You know, we, we, we trade in a real world with a lot of media buzz that uh, affects stock prices. Um, Dennis asked a question, um, runs in what version of Metastock? And I'll take that one for you, Roy. <clears throat> yeah. It'll actually run in any version um, that has RMO in it, which I believe is 10, but it might have been 11. I'd have to go look at the versionation notes. Um, the, I would also say that if you're not using 14, I would encourage you to get it. There's a shameless pug, isn't there? Um, <laughs> However, actually, I think some of the stuff that they have done with the new forecaster, I use all the time, and I think you're missing out by not having 14, Dennis. But if you have Metastock 10 and higher, it'll work. Um, Sarosh asks, so essentially what we get uh, for the it, out of the product is the manual and the instructions on how to set up a whole trading routine. That's correct, right, Roy? That's correct. You get, you get that, and then you also get, and I think this is extremely important, you get the follow-up support by Watching Being the videos to, every day. Do it, do it yourself and then watch the videos every day or at least checking in with the signals. I mean, we really feel that that's kind of a missing link because, well, you all know. We've all been there. You get taught something and then you take it home and you do it differently than what the instructor intended. So we really try to close that loop as, as best we can. And uh, I think the scan room is, is just priceless in that regard. And, uh, you know, I don't get paid anything to say this particularly, but we've had a lot of uh, customers that have done the Steady Trader. Uh, stuff and uh, they absolutely uh, the the only feedback I've really got about it is that has been actually really positive. So we fully vet these things before we bring them to you. <laughs> <laughs> Ken asked Thanks, a question: <laughs> Do your list of stocks and ETS change over time? If so, do you give us the updates when you change your list? Um, we haven't had to change them uh, in the past year, but we we. Do keep an eye on that. In fact, we did. Well, I, I take that back. We did make one change a, a few months ago, and we give the updates. We made a change for um, one of the daily adjustments we make on entries for the summer because, hey, look, we all know summer is tougher than the rest of the year. So again, you know our mantra. I, I said it enough. We believe in daily adaptation. So as we change things, we put a bolt. We we just upload it into your. Uh, into the system, so when you log on, you get it. But we put a little, you know, we put a little bulletin right on your homepage and says, "Hey, take a look. We've changed this, or we've changed that." Um, yeah, if, if we believe in anything, it's about uh, adapting to the market as things things get different than they do. Okay. And now, I think we've reached the end of the questions. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or, or uh, send in. Actually, if it's questions about SteadyTrader, you're probably better off emailing info at SteadyTrader.com. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. And uh, Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Finally again, Roy. Thanks for uh, the presentation today. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.